Welcome to the Expansive Astrology Podcast, where we look at using astrology beyond the tropes and horoscopes to tune into the natural forces around us and within us, honoring our true nature to craft our future. I'm your host, Melissa, the self-care witch, and I'm here to help you meet your magic. Without further ado, let's begin this week's episode with a tarot reading for the collective. Just a quick note before we really begin, Um, you might hear a lot of um, craziness in the background this week. Um, My toddler's downstairs playing with his aunt, my little sister, so they're having a really great time and uh, I don't know how much the mic might, might pick up on, so it might sound a little bit crazy. Hi! Welcome back to the Expansive Astrology Podcast. It's episode 40 today, and I'm so excited to introduce you to Pisces season, Expansive Astrology style. I can't wait to tell you how I see Pisces season and how um, I think it's here to help us connect to ourselves and craft ourselves. Pisces is the final zodiac sign of the astrological year, and it is said to kind of hold the weight of the wheel. It has seen everything. It has everything has led up to what Pisces is and what Pisces knows and what Pisces holds. It can be a very deep season, a very deep energy. It can be um, rather intense it sees and knows and holds all, <laughs> everything from before um, and helps prepare us for a new cycle. So there's a lot to get into this season. I really love Pisces energy. Uh, I love how it both um, helps us wrap up the entire year and prepares us for the year to come. So this week, I'm going to tell you all the different pieces and parts that make up what Pisces is and um, tell you a little bit about how I utilize Pisces energy every year. And um, hopefully it'll feel like a really nice, warm welcome into Pisces season. But first things first, I have a collective tarot reading for you. This is a four card spread by Lindsay Mack. Um, I largely read from soul tarot theory, and I always like to name that lineage. Um, Some of the things that I say in this tarot reading for the week might really resonate, might really speak to you personally. Some things, maybe not so much. I, as always, invite you to take what you need and leave the rest, and also stay open to seeing how these things may play out for you over the week to come. Because if you're hearing this, I trust that you're meant to hear it. First up, present for us this week, we have the Queen of Wands. And this is Aries energy. (laughs) So that's interesting. It's mutable fire energy. The Queen of Wands is said to be the witch of the tarot deck. And she invites us to embrace our power, to know our power, to utilize our power, to get shit done in the world in a way that only we can do There's a phrase, there's like, um, and a massive like permission here with the Queen of Wands to truly keep your eyes on your own paper. It's like the Queen of Wands has no need, no interest in comparing themselves to any other queen. (laughs) They know their shit. They know their magic. They're not going to doubt it, question it, deny it, minimize it. They're going to step forward and use their fire to create their kingdom that they um, are here to build. This is an invitation for you to embody that this week, for you to embody the Queen of Wands, for you to step forward in the full force of your fire, and the full force of your power, knowing how powerful you are, ready to craft your kingdom, craft your world in a way that only you are here to do. It doesn't matter how anyone else is doing it. What feels true to you? 
What are you bringing to this world? How do you show up in a way that nobody else does? This is about your unique, authentic way of being. How can you own who and what you are and what you're here to do a little more fully, a little more shamelessly? And there's always a bit of a caution, um, just something to pay attention to, just a knowing that um, this queen mutable fire or no oh my god not mutable fire cardinal fire i hope i said cardinal fire earlier um it can be real easy to just you know burn bridges <laughs> and sometimes bridges need to come down and sometimes m- maybe they just need a little tending or maybe they're just not a bridge that you need to cross anymore and that doesn't require arson right <laughs> so this week present for us for each of us is to embody the queen of wands and make sure that we don't get arrested for arson (laughs) and and another important note before i move on this is present for everyone right so like that's a really important thing to remember anytime i pull especially aries energy like um the emperor the queen of wands other other cards too but like something about Aries energy always kind of reminds me that this is not just about me embracing the queen of wands like I'm not the only queen of wands like everybody is a queen of wands everybody is an emperor everybody is the hierophant everybody is um power and magic and deserves to be respected as such um So as you are moving through the world in your unique Queen of Wands way, make sure you're also respecting everybody else's unique expression of their power and their fire. Don't expect everyone to do it like you, you know, and um, you're not going to get along with all the other queens out there, with all the other fire queens. Can that be okay? Don't let that diminish your fire and don't, don't let that, like, the answer isn't arson. (laughs) You don't have to burn shit to the ground unless, you know, unless you do, you know, sometimes you do, um, but use discretion. Our expression of the queen of wands is supported by the two of pentacles, which is one of my favorite cards in the whole deck. I love the two of pentacles. To me, this card reminds me to check what I've been using my hands for, to make sure there's the, the, the word that I think of with this card is devotion. What am I devoted to? What have I get, been getting my hands into? How can I find more um, divinity with that, more flow with that? How can I truly honor the fact that my hands are an extension of my heart? And how can I act like it (laughs) what have I been getting my hands into and I was just thinking about this I was just thinking about this (laughs) um today or yesterday maybe um I deleted Twitter from my phone again (laughs) uh we have a on and off relationship um but I you know there's so much more that I want to be doing with this life in this world, there's so much more that I want to be getting my hands into than fucking Twitter, you know? What can you be doing that would be more aligned with where you want to go? That would be more aligned with honoring your Queen of Wands work here? What can you be doing that will be honoring and serving you more fully? And this isn't just about gardening and um hobbies like it, it's not just about journaling and braiding your hair and you know it's not it's not only the things that feel good it's also like have you tended to your home have you taken out the trash are there chores that need to be done that haven't been done like what are what have you been doing and how can you ensure that what you're doing with your hands and your energy how you're engaging with your world and your resources, making sure that that is, um, that it is serving you, 
you know? What has your heart been needing? And if your hands are an extension of the heart, how can you work to provide that for yourself? This is where we're really learning and leaning into and playing with the idea of marrying our soul's calling with the difficulties of being human. Are you engaging in the world in a way that is aligned and helpful? Are you awake to what is around you? Have you been tending what is around you? My thing with my the, the Twitter thing for me, it's not so much that like, I don't know. One of one of the worst parts of it is that it keeps me disconnected from my actual world around me. Right? I'm like reading everybody else's stuff. And there's stuff here <laughs> that I want to be paying attention to and that I want to be getting my hands into and my nose into. Um there's so much more here right in front of me that I value much more, you know? Hmm. That's all, those are all two of Pentacles ideas. Um, And, you know, doing that work in conjunction with our Queen of Wands work, that's the invitation that's present for us as we start to wade into Pisces season this week. What we're learning this week is the Seven of Pentacles, which is a brilliant, (laughs) a brilliant third card in this spread. The seven of pentacles, the phrase that I always think is um, like, don't try to rush a natural process or um, don't try to force something. Don't try to force something that should happen organically or naturally. Another pentacles card where we're looking at how we're engaging with the earth, how we're engaging with our resources. And in the seven of pentacles, we're, we're invited to examine like truly like what is the best use of your resources here. Sometimes, you know, if you overfeed a fish or overwater a plant, you're probably going to kill it. Sometimes the best, most productive thing you can do is to step back and trust that you have done the work or that you have done all that can be done, or that this work isn't for you. There's like an honoring of divine timing in the Seven of Pentacles. You can't control everything. You can't nurture something to life if it's out of your hands, you know. Just there's what we're learning this week is how to best use our energy, how to best engage with our resources in a way that is appropriate and not taking on undue responsibility. Don't try to force a natural process. Don't try to rush the unfolding of things. Know when to kind of step back. So the spread this week asks, what are you getting your hands into? And what do you need to kind of back away from a little bit what do you need to just kind of be with and observe and hold while it unfolds itself wisdom with your energy wisdom with your resources and then our anchor for the week the four of swords it's kind of a boundary card it's a boundary with the brain it's learning how to relate with the brain this card invites us to take to choose to take a break from Engaging with the onslaught of thoughts that you may be having. It's about taking a break from overactive brain chemistry, taking a break from um, your brain's stories about things. Learning how we engage with the brain. Learning how to engage with the brain and its stories, the brain and its chemistry. (laughs) It's like it's this imperative reminder. This is like one of the most important things I think I've ever learned in my life is that I don't have to believe everything my brain tells me. And I don't have to take every invitation that it brings me into. My brain can do its thing. It's and it has its things, right? I think um, we all have our own special little spirals that our brain takes us down, right? This card is about like nervous system regulation. It's about tending the the nervous system, tending ourselves, tending our brains, and being awake 
enough and aware enough of the brain and its tricks to not necessarily believe it and not necessarily engage with it. It's not about suppressing or bypassing or trying to get out of the brain or somehow, you know, like ascend, (laughs) ascend our brain chemistry. Um, I don't know. That's not, I don't feel like that's a very useful goal. Um, Ascension past our humanness and our, our brains. Mm, I don't know if that's, I don't know. I'm not so sure about that. Um, And we know that suppressing our brain chemistry, trying to ignore it, trying to bypass it, trying to just shove it down and, and get rid of it. We know that that can be damaging and harmful, right? So it's not about those. That, that's not the approach. It's about having a brain, hearing it, relating with it, having appreciation for it and everything it does for us and not, not learning how to have it not be in the driver's seat. This is something I eventually want to hold like an entire like master class on is like basically just the four of swords, <laughs> how to have a brain that supports us and helps us because it's not always helpful, <laughs> you know, and it's not always right. It's not always correct. In fact, it's wrong a lot. The four of swords, our anchor is about taking breaks where necessary, tending our nervous system, talking to our sweet brain, you know, when it's bringing you into really fearful narratives, you can actively do what you can. Like we don't have a whole lot of control over that. It takes a lot of work to get out of that and to learn how to manage that and how it takes a lot of work to put that in the backseat at all. And to, to whatever degree you can, you can counteract it at least a little bit. But if your brain is bringing you into some unhealth, unhealthy, unhelpful shit, you can also feed your brain some sweetness and some tending. And, uh, you know, um, a lot of people call this affirmations. I guess it's affirmations. Um, affirmations like I deserve rest. I am safe. I've done everything I can do. I don't need to know what the outcome is going to be. You can kind of feed yourself, feed your brain narratives to counteract. It's bullshit. (laughs) Counteract its fear-based, untrue, old-ass stories. Overall, a really sweet spread, right? Engage with your power know your power, show up in the full force of your power and make sure that what you're getting your hands into, what you're focusing on and what you're devoted to is aligned with that bigger vision that you have for your sweet life, making sure that it's aligned with what your soul came here to do. You're learning how to engage with your energy, how to engage with your resources and when to conserve energy. You're learning to trust the unfolding of your life, trust divine timing, and to learning how to be okay with those moments where you have no control whatsoever. And your anchor this week is asking you to take better care of yourself, find breaks and boundaries, learn to engage with your brain in a way that is helpful as much as possible. Be sweet with yourself, be sweet with your in- inner narrative with your inner monologue find rest whether that's physical literal rest like you know some sort of break or or a nap (laughs) or whether it's um finding rest in your own mind which uh, i can speak about twitter again um deleting twitter helps me to quiet my mind a little bit it helps empower me it helps me disengage with something that makes makes my mind go a million miles an hour about a million topics that I otherwise probably wouldn't be thinking of, you know? So, so, so that's your tarot reading for the week. I really hope it feels helpful and we're coming up on the end of February. So I want to remind you, first of all, that I do free tarot on my Instagram stories every single Friday. 
And I'll be working on March tarot readings, individualized, personalized March tarot readings for those of you who are signed up for the Meet Your Magic monthly membership. Those will be going, I'll be working on those um, the next couple weeks. It's already almost March, y'all. So if you're not signed up for that and you find these tarot readings helpful, I would absolutely love to help have you join us. I would love to do a March tarot reading for you. And on that note, that's all I have for you for the tarot reading this week. Let's move into the expansive astrology where we're talking about Pisces season. So to start, I always like to break down each sign into little pieces and parts. Look at all of the facets that make each sign what it is so that we can have a really full deep understanding of what this season may be bringing to you this year. I want you to know all the ins and outs of Pisces season so that you can be really awake and aware and present with how this sign shows up um, and how this next season will unfold. It is said that Pisces is aware of the whole breadth of the universe It has seen everything. It holds everything. It's aware of how massive (laughs) the universe is. And it is, Pisces is drawn to knowing fully, deeply, wholly all that is involved in the universe and what it means to be alive here in this experience. So just some, some light, (laughs) little tiny, (laughs) trivial shallow things to consider this season that's all just just a little just little things like what it means to be alive here in this universe (laughs) it's also the sign that concludes the zodiacal wheel which invites us to complete what needs to be completed yeah i really like to utilize this season as a time to reflect and really like look back at what the last year has held, looking at what's been working, what has not been working, where where I'm um, headed, right? Pisces is a mutable water sign ruled by Jupiter and Neptune and represented by the fishes. It rules over the 12th house of self-undoing. And its phrase is, I believe. The tarot cards for Pisces season are the moon, the wheel of fortune, the hanged one, and the knight of cups. So let's break all of that down. What does all of that mean? What does it all entail? Along with Cancer and Scorpio, Pisces brings us water energy. Water is known as the source of life. It makes up so much of our very being, literally and metaphorically. Water is emotional energy. It is healing and nurturing and can navigate itself through obstacles gently or with great force. We all know that when we bottle up our emotions and don't allow them to flow and move and be expressed, they eventually explode like a failing dam. Pisces is water energy, meaning it is emotional, vulnerable, intuitive. And Pisces brings us deep into the depths of the ocean. All of the water signs build upon the other. Cancer introduces us to water energy. Scorpio brings that deeper and Pisces brings that even deeper. And unlike Cancer and Scorpio, Pisces is our mutable water sign. The mutable signs are Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. And these are those signs who are the most flexible, the most willing and capable of adjusting and changing position. In Soul Tarot, the mutable signs are the Knights, because the Knights bring movement. This means... They are resilient and able to withstand and adjust to the changes that life throws at them. 
I always go back to the way Roy Gillette describes the signs. He compares the mutable signs to the ingredients in a bowl, where the cardinal signs are the spoon and the fixed signs are the bowl itself. The risk or the challenge with the mutable signs is in not being too flexible, too willing to adjust or go with the flow. There's a balance there. The mutability, the flexibility, the resiliency is a strength. It's a gift. It's a great thing. And it's one of the challenges of these signs is learning how to bend and not break. Pisces is ruled by Jupiter, which is known as the planet of luck, generosity, abundance, and expansion. The largest of all the planets, Jupiter brings an energy of hope, even in the face of adversity. In mythology, Jupiter ruled the heavens. It is said that Jupiter fathered the deities of commerce, love, springtime, the sun, the moon, and wisdom among others. Hindus call this planet guru or teacher, and they say the greatest lesson in life is to have an opportunity and then learn how to master it. Opportunities to overcome problems and barriers. Opportunity in the form of knowledge, support, time, spaciousness, or or financials. Jupiter is about where we can be generous, where we can expand into abundance. Neptune is also at home in Pisces. Neptune is a planet of mystery and illusion. Named after the god of the sea, Neptune rules the seas of our subconscious. Neptune inspires our spirit, our dreams, and our creativity. Neptune symbolizes uncertainty, reminding us that our beliefs are not the truth with a capital T. I think of Neptune as deep and dramatic, and this quote from Roy Gillette reaffirms that for me. Roy says, quote, Neptune can also lead us adrift in the deep. As what seemed to be solid proves to be fluid and insubstantial, leaving us sinking, deceived and lost, neurotic and self-pitying, not knowing where to turn. Unquote. Yikes. (laughs) And we can see the way that Pisces holds, like, everything just illustrated by those two planets, right? Jupiter, this planet of expansion, luck, generosity, abundance, and then Neptune, this planet of of the seas of our subconscious <laughs> uncertainty. It's a lot, right? And what it's that's the perfect way to introduce the fishes. Pisces is represented by two fishes that are tied together and swimming in different directions representing desires that pull us in seemingly opposite, different directions. The fishes represent the breadth of conflicting experiences, emotions, and the depth of this existence in general. These two fish are, for eternity, swimming in different directions, always heading somewhere they're both heading somewhere different they're both witnessing opposite things and yet they are one and they're tied together and they together that experience of of that exactly together is what pisces is it's very abstract it's very ethereal i find my i have a pisces moon and i find myself feeling like these ways that I'm describing Pisces, like it's hard to describe. It's a hard energy to describe. And I'm, I'm finding myself feeling like um, these words aren't enough. <laughs> like I have more to go, but it almost feels like I can't possibly capture 
all that Pisces is and holds. It's like it's something that we really just have to feel into. But let me keep painting the picture for you the way I see it. Pisces rules over the 12th house of self-undoing. Again, just, you know, some light things to think about and ponder. Self-undoing. Whew. This is like, it's how we serve ourselves. The 12th house is all about our inner worlds and how we live there, how we exist there, how we tend ourselves. This 12th house contains those things, feelings, thoughts, beliefs, those things that we are most comfortable handling alone (laughs) for the most part, most of us, right? This includes the ways we act against our own best interests. It also encompasses the ways we neglect ourselves or sacrifice ourselves for others. In the 12th house, there's this like unstoppable self-reliance. There can also be self-destruction. In the 12th house, we're learning how to have that deep, rich sense of an inner world where our feelings and our thoughts and our beliefs and even our self-destruction and the ways that we are contrary to ourselves and within ourselves. We really learn that inner world with Pisces in the 12th house. So in the 12th house, we're learning how to be in that and have it for ourselves, have a healthy relationship with that inner world for ourselves. And we're also learning to allow others into that inner world. That's hard work to both be self-reliant and, and let others in. To nurture and nourish, appreciate and enjoy our inner world and also not get too stuck there, right? Also tend to our outer world. It's all what we learn. It's all part of what we learn in this season. And the phrase for Pisces is, I believe. We're stepping out of Aquarius season where the phrase was, I know. (laughs) And we're stepping into Pisces season where the phrase is, I believe. Before we wrap up this astrological cycle and enter the next... Take some time to really be with this phrase, I believe. What is it you believe? What do you know? What have you seen? What have you experienced? We get to build on the work that we did in Aquarius season. And we talked a lot about that phrase, I know, at um, the Aquarius new moon moon meetup. So those of you who were with me for that, now we get to really build on that, expand on that, take it, make it a little more ethereal, a little more abstract. It's not just what you know. Now we're looking at what do you believe? I encourage you to like free write on this, turn off your brain um, and really explore what comes up for you. What thoughts and beliefs and experiences do you hold closest to you? Similarly to in cancer season, when we explore our values and what we're carrying with us and building our life upon, what do you believe to be true? What exists in your foundation that you hold close to your heart? Take some time to explore and refine that. Reflect on your beliefs and what you are taking with you into this next new year. After all, 2023 is a chariot year, which is also all about exploring what we're bringing with us and what we're leaving behind. What do you believe? Now, I'm going to list some of the empowered traits of Pisces and some of the disempowered traits of Pisces. I want us all to be really aware of these different expressions of Pisces energy or or, of energy in general. Keep these things in mind. Have a really 
clear idea of how to empower yourself with Pisces energy. And as this next cycle unfolds, as the next four weeks or so unfold, notice when you are expressing disempowered these disempowered traits or these disempowered energies, I really believe that when we can have the awareness and the mindfulness to be like, oh, I am acting, I am being, I am feeling very disempowered right now. When we can catch that and notice it and be aware of it and love ourselves through it, it becomes a little easier dare I say it because it's not an easy thing it becomes a little simpler we have more of a a blueprint or a roadmap of how to shift from that disempowered expression into an empowered expression the example I always use is when I'm deep in my inner world my Pisces moon inner world that is so rich and really easy for me to retreat to I I can become very disempowered and the example I always use is like I'll start to kind of walk around and be like, oh, I am the only one who makes the bed. I'm the only one, you know, I have that like classic husband problem where he leaves his clothes on the side of the bed instead of putting them in the damn hamper. It's just one of those things, you know, <laughs> it's one of those things that exists in my life. And when I'm feeling disempowered, when I'm feeling alone, that becomes a really big deal, right? Um, And it doesn't have to be, and it isn't always a really big deal. Um, Oftentimes, it's something that I just kind of smile at, and it's just a part of my life. And like, it's, I can choose to make it a big deal or not. But when I'm feeling disempowered, and when I'm in this like, icky place, I'll kind of storm around the house and I'm doing all the things all by myself. And my narrative is how alone I am. And ultimately, what I am needing, craving, and wanting in those moments is to feel not alone. I want a hug. I want some partnership. I want to connect. I want to be able to state my need and have that need met, right? What I want is like a hug (laughs) and to be reminded that um, I'm not alone. And yet, if I'm in that disempowered place where all I want is a hug, right? I would love it, right? I'm not being very huggable. It takes a brave man to hug a woman who's storming around the house. (laughs) I am much more likely to get that hug and connection and partnership and help that I'm desiring if I can empower myself and not feel like a victim to my world and my husband's laundry. (laughs) If I can empower myself to ask for a hug, ask for partnership, ask him to put the clothes in the hamper or hang them up or whatever, right? Anytime I'm in that disempowered place. And it's not about invalidating those feelings, right? In that moment, I am feeling alone. And there are a lot of things that I need to ask for. There are a lot of things. There are needs that need to be met. But what is more likely? How am I more likely to get those needs met? What's the path of like least resistance to getting those needs met? Storming around, doing all the chores by myself silently. Like, yeah, the need will be met eventually but that's like it doesn't feel good for anybody and it's not the most effective way to go about it I can empower myself I can say what I want is partnership and a hug so I'm going to ask for it I'm going to make myself a little more huggable and I'm going to get my damn hug and I'm going to get some help with the laundry so a bit of a tangent (laughs) but I hope that it illustrates the way that our When we're in a disempowered place, we are having a need, right, or several (laughs) that um, are valid and deserve to be tended to, our needs deserve to be met, and you can empower yourself to have those needs met in a more effective way that feels better for everyone involved. You can always shift at any 
point in time, you can be in the middle of throwing a massive fit and catch it, notice it, and decide to shift into a more empowered place. At any, any time in the process, we can shift from disempowerment to empowerment. So empowered expressions of Pisces energy. Pisces is sensitive and compassionate. It's adaptable, aware, awake, creative, passionate, intuitive. Pisces is idealistic, imaginative, and sensitive. It's mature and healing. It loves easily and is full of kindness. It's supportive and understanding, emotional and empathetic. Pisces is loyal and generous, and it's emotional and emotional and emotional. (laughs) Disempowered Pisces energy can be vague, it can be burdened and victimized. It's vulnerable, isolating, and flighty. It can be people-pleasing and passive. It's tortured, and it lacks boundaries. Disempowered Pisces energy loves easily, which was also on the empowered Pisces energy list, right? A lot of these things, like the vulnerability, um, the being idealistic, the um, loving easily, those things can be empowered or they can be disempowered. Pisces can be fearful, impractical, overindulgent, unsure of itself, indecisive, secretive, insecure, and dramatic. A reminder that none of those things are a problem unless they're a problem, right? It's not a problem to be vulnerable. It's not a problem to love easily unless or until it does become a problem. So some of the challenges for Pisces energy, some of the challenges for Pisces um, are those that lack of boundaries, that um, difficulty with a sense of self, which is a byproduct of having a lack of boundaries. Pisces can be known for self-destruction. A lot of people warn about like addiction with Pisces energy. Pisces can feel like there's so much, there's so much, right? There's so much and it can feel a sense of responsibility or it can feel, feel really victimized to demands that aren't actually there or demands or responsibilities that aren't actually theirs. Pisces struggles with fostering an inner world while also knowing when to step out of that inner world. It struggles with allowing others to go there into the depths of ourselves with us. Also with that um, lack of boundaries, with the mutability, Pisces can have trouble learning when to say no. So if you resonate with any of those challenges, this is the season for you to just kind of feel into those things, learn a little bit more about those things, and empower yourself around those things. Later this season, we're going to be talking more about fostering our inner world while also allowing ourselves to step out of it and allowing others to go there with us. We're going to talk about our inner world and having a rich sense of an inner world, a healthy sense of that, 
that is also resistant to the temptation to escape. Having this rich, healthy, beautiful inner world that isn't rooted in escapism and avoidance of the rest of the world (laughs) that isn't rooted in self-isolation where we're allowing others in too. We'll also talk a bit about what it means to hold space for discomfort without attaching to it or identifying with it. We're looking at those two different fishes. One is swimming upstream, one is swimming downstream. How can we hold space for the discomfort of that? How can we hold space for, quote unquote, what might be downstream? How can we swim through that without identifying with it? Ultimately, we're working with the depths of ourselves in a way that promotes freedom. So exploring self-sabotage and self-destruction, self-defeat. Exploring the boundaries that exist between you and others. Where the boundaries are, where things begin and where they end. We'll be exploring how like learning to say no which is massive and we'll be exploring like having boundaries between yourself and other people's problems we'll be exploring what it means to like give and support and have empathy and care without burdening yourself unnecessarily And finally, we'll be talking about closure, release, and completion. This is the season that wraps up the whole wheel. We get to kind of explore what it might mean to wrap up everything we're complete with. What do you want to be complete with before we step into Aries season? Which, if Pisces Pisces is the season of self-undoing, Aries is the season of self So we've got a lot of preparation to do. Some beautiful opportunities in that way. So that's my Pisces season introduction. Next week, Tarot Week, I'll chat more about um, the moon card, the hanged one, the wheel of fortune, and that knight of cups. Deepening our understanding of this energy and what it brings how we can engage with the medicine and use it. And then later on this season, we'll be exploring some shadow work. We'll be exploring that the inner depths of ourselves. And until then, your job is to just open and explore. If you know your natal chart, take a look at... um, what Pisces is doing in your world. Take a look at what's happening in your 12th house. It'll help expand your understanding of how this is showing up for you and maybe where. And then we have the new moon in Pisces on Sunday the 19th. That's the perfect time to really draw in Pisces energy. Take some time and set some intentions. What would you like Pisces season to be like for you? What are you wanting to learn during this cycle? Can you really purposefully, really intentionally invite in Pisces energy? Like, what are you here to teach me this year? How can I work with this medicine to help me continue to expand into my biggest most beautiful life possible. If you would like to do that new moon intention setting in the company of yours truly and some other wonderful, beautiful, amazing people, make sure that you have my moon circles on your calendar. They're every other Sunday at 6 p.m. virtually via Zoom or locally in Old Town Fort Collins. You can find everything you need to know on my website, And you can always feel free to reach out to me with any questions. 
Sunday the 19th, we'll be chatting about the new moon in Pisces. And then Sunday, March 5th, we'll be celebrating the full moon in Virgo. Put them on your calendar, RSVP via my website, and I hope to see you there. And if you're interested in making moon circles a regular part of your self-care routine, I have just the thing for you. It's the Meet Your Magic monthly membership. (laughs) For just $25 a month, you will receive an all-access pass to all of my moon circles as well as a monthly personalized tarot spread right into your inbox. So even if moon circles aren't your thing and you're just interested in a monthly tarot spread from yours truly, the Meet Your Magic monthly membership is for you. And if you would like to support my work here and support the podcast, if you like the podcast, that subscription truly is like so supportive for me so i appreciate you all so so much and um if you haven't signed up yet but you've been thinking about it i would love to have you and now's the time because march tarot readings will be going out very soon can you believe it's almost the end of february january was a thousand days long and now (laughs) now it's almost the end of february it's wild Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope it feels like a really lovely introduction to Pisces energy. I hope you're feeling ready to swim. <laughs> Pisces can be it's it can be heavy for some people. Many people don't have a whole lot of comfort with these watery, very emotional things. And that can bring up like self-destruction escapism so there's a lot to explore this season um please let me support you if you need some support never hesitate to reach out i will see you here next week and in the meantime take care bye now before you go let me keep your ear for just a moment This week's episode is brought to you by www.theselfcarewitch.com, my bread and butter, where you can find more information on my current courses, offerings, and other fun ways to connect with myself and yourself. If you enjoyed this episode and you dig what I'm doing here, please subscribe to the podcast, rate it, and leave a review. It helps so much. And if you'd like to connect with me, head to theselfcarewitch.com. I'd truly love to hear from you. Until next time, take care.